Hi everybody. It's Michelle here with the Vapor Hut. Um, so we got a couple of things today. You're going to get to meet the owners of the Vapor Hut. Um, and of course I'm going to interview them and ask them a couple of questions. Um, I'll tell you where you can find the freshest e-liquid, who orders in the last, who's ordered in the last week and where they're located. We do have a couple of new businesses um, to highlight. Um, and then a couple of regular businesses that are out of the country. Um, if any of you are in the service and you are looking for e-liquid, um, we ship pretty much anywhere to individual people. Um, we have... Um, 0, 3, 6, 8, 12, 18, and 24 milligram e liquids, um, both regular and then Max VG. Um, our Max VG is 9010 and the regular is 6040. Um, so, like I said, we're going to um, meet the owners of the Vapor Hut today and uh, spend a little bit of time with them, getting to know them. Um, figuring out why they're in the business, that kind of stuff. Um, so, hi Cody. Um, hi Angel. James, I'm sure, will be on in a minute because he always is. Um, well, without too much more going on, I'm going to go ahead and get Christy and Melissa over here to uh, talk to you guys. And then after their segment's over, they're going to go ahead and go do all the businessy stuff. You sit there. You're on the taller one. <laughs> Hi. Okay. <laughs> so introduce yourselves, please. I'm Christy. I'm Melissa. Um, and you guys own the Vapor Hut. Um, why did you get into the vape industry in the first place? Because I had asthma and I was uh, a smoker for like 20 years. It's a long time. It is. Yeah. And. Uh, my best friend here smoked cigarettes <laughs> and I didn't want her to. And so uh, I just started looking into it and I found a kit and we went in half. Yep. And it was purple. And <laughs> where did we get that thing from? Volcano, I think. Oh, yeah. And uh, we knew it worked from that point on. And we're just excited. Yeah. We just want to help everybody get off the yeah. Yeah, getting off cigarettes is really important. Um, and how did you guys start up? Because I know you didn't start with like the warehouse and, and five stores, which is where we're at now. So how did you get your start? Well, it was very frustrating in the beginning here in Oklahoma because you couldn't just go to the store and find stuff. And we wanted to. <laughs> so Melissa's like, let's let's order some stuff. And Well, it wasn't exactly safe dealing out of our car. Yes, oh. that, that too. That's the story I heard is that you guys had actually started making e-liquid for yourselves and family members and it kind of spread out to friends wanting your e-liquid and you go into parking lots and meeting people to make deals because everything was available on the internet but you had to wait for delivery all the time and so yeah. it made it really difficult. Um, Back then there, I mean, there weren't very many places to order. So well, We were getting busy too. Yeah, yeah. So, so you needed to like stand a stable location everybody could come to and find you guys. Um, what was your first flavor? Do you remember what the first flavor you guys ever made was? Strawberry cheesecake. <laughs> or, strawberry. No, or strawberry. It was strawberry. Probably. Just strawberry. strawberry. Um, what's your favorite flavor now? Peanut butter. Hazelnut. <laughs> Actually, I take that back. Peanut butter and hazelnut had to have been our first flavors. And then the strawberry. Because I had that guy who kept coming back and tasting it. <laughs> And blueberry cinnamon crumble was one of the first ones, too, because I was hooked on blueberry in the beginning for a long time. So. And do you still vape just the straight peanut butter now, or? Um, yes. <laughs> do you uh, vape? Well, because I know we have one called Jackpot, and it's got peanut butter and hazelnut and banana and some other things in it. It's so popular. I didn't know if y'all still vaped just the straight peanut butter or this and the straight. Hey, really, you stuck with the same flavor? Been my cracks since yes. day one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's worked. So you guys yeah. don't smoke anymore. You don't have cheater cigarettes when you go to the bar. You know no. that's great. Um, so I don't have to ask the next question because you already told me you smoked prior to vaping. A lot of people are picking up vapes for the first time instead of a cigarette. 
Um, and so I didn't know if that was the case with you guys, if you were just, you know, wanting a, a hobby. Because yeah. some people are just doing it for a hobby. We started um, out with the Sigalikes, and they were tiny, you know, little batteries. And we were carrying around about 10 of them. <laughs> so you could make it through a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, how do you feel about, this is going to get touchy, okay? So how do you feel about Jewel asking, or the FDA asking Jewel and Altria to come up with industry changes that need to occur in vaping? Well, I think it's total corruption. I agree. I got you. Um, for those of you who don't know, Altria is the owner of Philip Morris and several other large cigarette companies. Um, and, and they recently purchased 35% of Juul. Um, and since then, Scott Gottlieb is acting like um, the tobacco industry is where he should get the standards from instead of the consumers. Um, so I, I, for those of the people watching that don't know, that's a little background. Um, what's the one thing that you wish you could change about people's perception of vaping? That it's just as dangerous as cigarettes and that they're going to eventually find something just as bad and, and that's just false. There's right. There's science out there that has proven, you know, that it, it is safer. And, and they just keep shoving this false information down people's throats. And you're talking about the UK study that they did um, over a 10-year period of time. And the United Kingdoms, uh, it's, it's not just like one college. It's 86 professionals throughout the world that come together and they've, they've looked into it and it says 95% yes. safer than smoking a, a regular cigarette. Mm -hmm. They recognize it there. <clears throat> I got you. And um, what are our changes? I know that, that we've had a lot of changes in the last year. What is the change you're most looking forward to in the next year for the Vapor Hut? Um, well, I would like to see us uh, get our subscription going. Um, we're not certain how long the internet is going to be available to our online customers. And I, uh, I, we think that that's our, our game plan for the future. Um, we wanna still be able to, you know, <laughs> help everybody out no matter where they live. So also, if you live in a different state and you have your favorite vape shop or whatever, I highly recommend, you know, you asking them to get a hold of Michelle uh, that'll help too in the future. So basically just trying to get a spread all over the place, but more to meet the customer's need for quality e-liquid yes. as opposed to um, them getting their rights taken away. I got you. And so with the subscription service, they'll be able to pay every month or um, every year or how is it? It's probably going to be, gonna set, be up set up monthly. Monthly? Monthly? Sure. And then we'll just email or mail them their their cho chosen yes. e-liquid every month and so then it's automatic billing which a lot of people yes. are really comfortable with yes. and and it keeps them from having to take the time to order on the internet mm -hmm. every time um i want to thank you ladies for coming out and i know that you got a lot of work to do because you know all that office stuff takes well. time in the <laughs> five stores and um over 30 employees it it's a lot of pressure on you guys so thank you very much for taking your time today and y'all have a good day okay well, thank you michelle yeah, thank you we uh -huh. appreciate you all right so that was christy and melissa they're our owners here at the vapor hut um <laughs> if y'all can't tell um my station is on a rolling cart for my online and so it can move far away or close up or depending um, if you have shaky leg syndrome because you can't sit still. Um, that'll happen too. Um, hi Dylan. Hi Wes. Although I don't ever call you that. Hi Mitchell. <laughs> um, so you heard about, you know, um, the FDA really, uh, they shouldn't be asking a cigarette company what kind of standards to put on the vape industry. Um, if you don't notice, at the top of my screen, it says warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Um, I've looked everywhere. There is not a single cigarette pack in the store. Hi, Kim. Uh, hi, Audrey. Okay, I'm back. Okay, sorry, signal got dropped. 
<laughs> that was crazy. Um, it, so, so the FDA is asking them their question about, you know, what, what do they think that we should do to help the industry? And uh, there's really a conflict of interest there. And if it was any other um, legal thing, they would actually be excluded from the conversation because there's the conflict of interest. So um, um, I don't think Altria, even with their 35% interest in Juul, should be someone making up industry standards. They don't aren't held to the same standard as a vape company. So with our product straight on the label um, on actually two primary panels, so um, it has to be 30%, it has to be in 12 point font, it has to, it's very specific that it be black with a white background or white with a black background um, on Marlboros, on Camels, on none of those um, have to remove part of their labeling to put a big warning on there. Um, in a pack of Marlboros recently, I did find a flyer in the back um, that you can unfold and then read all that stuff. But as far as stamping it directly on their product like we have to do, um, no, Trey, I did not see the news this morning with Lucky Charms flavored beer. Now, you guys know this is my pet peeve. Um, I don't understand why alcohol, which ends more lives and fam ruins families a lot worse, um, is just given free reign to do whatever they want. And there's, there's, they're marketing to children left and right and center. They're still on the, the, the Super Bowl. It's all about the beer. And, and so I don't understand why it's held to this, a different standard. Um, I wouldn't drink Lucky Charms flavored beer. <laughs> That's just me personally. Um, and I don't know many people that would, but a marshmallow vape. Yeah, I could see a marshmallow fruit vape. That's kind of cool, but I don't want to drink it. Um, I, I don't drink this. Um, it's it's not real good to drink. You can taste it, and it's pretty good, but drinking it's not really an option. So just um, if you are not politically motivated but you do vape, please get a hold of your Congress people, your House of Representatives people, and let them know you do not want them to ban flavors, that that's what got you to quit smoking. Um, <laughs> I know, it, it, the biasness of it is really bad. Um, it, the other day I was reading, you know, when um, anytime the news starts bringing up the opiate epidemic, then suddenly Scott Gottlieb's on the news talking about the FDA and the, and the vaping epidemic. Um, and so I'm just, when you compare the two, the opiate epidemic is really an epidemic. There are millions of people driving around on heroin, um, leaving their kids for weeks at a time at home, pursuing their drugs, um, ruining their life and the lives of many others, and, and that's an epidemic. Um, not that I'm saying that teen vaping is okay because it's not. Um, but kids experiment with stuff, um, be it drugs, sex, alcohol, texting and driving. Um, all of these things are dangerous, um, high risk behavior. And, it, it, and anybody who, out, who is out there who has been a teenager knows that you have some high risk behavior, whether you sneak out of your house to go party with your friends or you get in a car with somebody you know has been drinking or using drugs. Um, there are a lot of high risk behaviors teens fall in. Um, what they don't tell you is that as the teen experimental or um, vaping has increased, teen cigarette smoking has dramatically fallen. In fact, it's the lowest it has ever been in our country. So, so that shows you right there that vaping can lead to a society that is cigarette free. Um, the government gets billions of dollars every year in taxes off of cigarettes. Um, and that's one of the reasons they don't just outright ban a flavor that has over 6,000 chemicals in it that, or I'm sorry, a product 
that has over 6,000 chemicals in it that they know over half of them are cancer causers. Um, and, and some of it had to do with people's choice. So if you're not banning a cigarette, um, you're not banning those little prime times in cherry flavor because they're still at every store. Um, th then, then banning this e-liquid that has four to five ingredients that are listed on the label, just it, it doesn't make sense. So, hi, Miss Barbara. Um, so talk to your representatives, talk to your Congress people, let them know how many lives you know have been directly positively affected by vaping. Um, it's really important that our, hi Emily, that our, um, our representatives know um, the, not just the negatives, because I, I'm sure there are some, but the positives. Um, we have a lot of problem in our news. Bye, Trey. Thank you. Um, Trey is Melissa's husband, for you guys that don't know. Um, there have been a lot of what I consider exaggerated or false news reports done by the media. Um, recently, CNN had a report of a teenager. Okay, when you guys need to do your research, because when they say teenager in the media, I want you to understand that that means 18, 19. So anybody who falls into those two-year brackets right there um, and is vaping, that's some of the people they're talking about. When they talk about high school seniors, a lot of those high school seniors, yes, they're in high school, but they're actually legal adults. They're old enough to vote. They're old enough to die for your country. They're old enough to sign up for to be a police officer or fighter fire. Um, so they're legally old enough to vape in their community. And um, so saying teen is really kind of misleading. Um, she was old enough to vote, own a firearm, you know, be drafted. And she got wet lung. And that is in quotation marks in the article from three weeks of vaping. <clears throat> they report that though many users are unaware of nicotine and e-liquid. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen a bottle of e-liquid recently. But if you are old enough to buy e-liquid, this is how much space the warning about nicotine takes up on my product bottle. It is 30%. If you cannot read this, your problems are not just vaping. Um, it, it tells you on every single bottle that, that, that contains nicotine that it has nicotine in it. So that, that whole quote, though many users are unaware of nicotine in e-liquid, it's just a straight lie. Um, they're just trying to inflame people and make them angry. Um, Anyway, she was an, actually an asthma sufferer and, and was diagnosed with wet lung. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's actually hypersensitivity pneumotitis, which is a type of lung infection that occurs due to an allergic reaction to chemicals or dust. Um, they give her methylprednisone to get rid of it. Methylprednisone is for severe allergic reaction treatment. So it wasn't that she, um, the e-liquid that necessarily bothered her, as it was she was allergic to one of the components. Now, I personally <coughs> vape Max VG, and the reason for that is I'm allergic to propylene glycol. Um, I knew within, I would say, two drags off my vape that I, something in it was not sitting well with me. Um, and I asked Christy and Melissa, because that was the first place I ever went to get a vape, and they said, oh, you're probably just PG intolerant, which means that I have a slight allergy to propylene glycol. And so they made me up some Max VG, which our Max VG is 90% vegetable glycerin, which is all natural, and only 10% propylene glycol, which is um, a chemical that is actually in a lot of what you eat and drink. So... Um, it's in a lot of soaps, it's in, it's in stuff that you put on your body every day and people just don't realize it. So basically, 
it was not a side effect of vaping. It was a side effect of her allergy. Um, and that's just like one example of the hundreds of stories that are being run about um, health issues. They never talk about the fact that the person has asthma or that they're um, bed bound. Um, popcorn lung is like that big thing. Um, popcorn lung comes from vaping diacetyl. Most products in the United States have removed diacetyl from their products. Um, it's the butter flavor you get. Um, in fact, there's diacetyl in buttered popcorn that you buy and put in your microwave. Um, so some of these products or chemicals that have been approved as a food additive by the FDA, we really need to look at the FDA's approval process. Um, I read um, an article yesterday about um, a diabetes medication. In fact, there's a list of about five of them. And they are causing genital infections <laughs> um, from using the diabetes medication, but they're FDA approved. So, and, and the FDA is now warning people. So I'm wondering how fast the FDA approval is for Big Pharma compared to something like our e-liquid, because we're still debating on the safety of this product. Um, and and, and they're approving medications for, for people who need them to live. Um, and in my opinion, they're, they're approving a lot of them based on money. Um, it's all about the pharmacy industry making cash. Um, in point of fact, um, Lexaria Bioscience and Altria, which if you guys don't know, once again, that's the people who own Philip Morris, um, are, con are contracting together to make nicotine edibles. Uh, from what I saw in the picture, this is going to be like um, a Hall's cough drop, um, similar to that. So basically, it's candy with nicotine in it. Um, so the candy flavor is just fine, as long as it's in a big pharma product. Um, your um, lozenges that you can buy, the NRT, nicotine replacement therapy lozenges, come in like three flavors. Um, the patch is a flavor isn't necessary. I'm allergic to the patch. I did try it. Um, it breaks out my skin really bad. Um, I would have to move my patch every time I put a new one on. I would have a big old red square around there. So um, I haven't had any rashes with my e-liquid. I also know I buy it from a quality company. Um, hi, Dan. Um, Dan's with Johnny Copper. Johnny Copper carries our liquid and they also manufacture their own. He has uh, three stores down in Florida now. Um, if you guys are down in the San Marcos area, go check out that store. It is phenomenal. Um, it has a patio outside. It's set up like a sports bar on the inside, but a little more techno to it. Um, it's a great looking shop. Uh, I, I wish our shops looked that cool because it, it, it really does look cool. Um, so there, um, there is a lot of like double standard going on in the vape industry right now. Now I do have um, some good news for people in Kentucky. I have a shop in Kentucky. <laughs> Nick Gummies for the win. <laughs> um, I have a shop in Kentucky called... Um, Vapor World Kentucky, uh, Robin's down there. They just had a vote this week, um, the Tobacco 21 vote, and they voted no as a community. So um, that's really good. So people who are still trying cigarettes in Kentucky um, can move over to vaping, and they don't have to be 21. Um, most teenagers try cigarettes anywhere between 13 and 17, so if we can get them off of the cigarettes as soon as they're legal. That would be better. Um, the FDA is also looking into approving nicotine replacement therapy for minors. So it, they're looking into drugging children to get them off of nicotine. So you're talking well, Butrin, um, Chantix, that kind of stuff for minor children. And, and that might be okay, that chemical that you have no clue what it does. And, and as we've seen, the FDA a process for approval is really fast for medications. Um, but 
kids vaping zero milligram e-liquid to not smoke cigarettes that's it's illegal to sell um it's illegal for them to do so and so it it seems like the fda wants you to quit but only the way they tell you you can um and if you've ever tried to quit smoking you know that some people just it doesn't matter you can try the patches the gum the lozenges uh the pills and you're still not successful. The, the the vape has been proven to be twice as effective as NRT. So, really, you guys, if you... Hi, RJ. Hi, Tiffany. Um, if you're trying to quit smoking, I really suggest you give it a try. Um, I'm going to get into the shops that have bought in the last week. Um, Dan sits outside of that. He bought the week before, but... Um, just so you guys know, he has great flavors in in-house flavors, and then he carries some really phenomenal premium brands, including ours. Um, so go down there and see him. So in the last week, I've had Atlanta Vapor in Peachtree City, Georgia has restocked. Vape Central in Atlanta has restocked. And Vaporite in Marietta has restocked. And those three stores are all in Georgia. Um... <coughs> Down South Vapor in St. Cloud, Florida has restocked. Um, the Drip Drop Vapor Shop in McClenny, Florida has reshopped. I like saying their name. Yes, Miss Tiffany, I do age, but you don't. Um, Misty Mountain is in Riley. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Um, Misty Mountain is in Riley, North Carolina. Um, and they just restocked. I've got Harbor Vapor in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, the Garage Coffee Music and More is in Fort Stockton, Texas. And not only do they sell e-liquid products, but they have some of the best Texas bands come and play. And um, they do a trivia night, and we kind of add prizes to their giveaways. Um, if any of you are from the stores and you need giveaway stuff, please let me know. I will send you a giveaway box. Um, I know you do cloud comps every once in a while, Dan, so be sure and let me know next time you need stuff, and I will send you out some donations to give away. Um, Venice Smoke Shop in Jacksonville, Florida. CC's Tobacco is in Talladega. Um, you can see Nick over there. Uh, we got Crazy 8 Vapor. They're in Spring, Texas. Um, new shops. Okay, so new shops this week. We got Smiley's Breezy Vapes. They're in Altus, Oklahoma. Um, Shelly is there. She is a wonderfully sweet lady. Um, and she ordered this week for her first order. And then Jemison Vape down in Jemison, Alabama. That's Cindy Elrod. And Cindy ordered this week too. So, um, her liquids haven't even left yet. Um, so let us know. And in the next week, um, she'll be getting them there. So if you guys live anywhere around Jemison, Alabama, go see her. Let her know what you think of the Vapor Hut. Um, Garage Vape and Espresso reordered, and they're in Shelton, Washington. And then I have a special shout-out to Vapia in Okinawa, Japan. Um, I can't tell you the name of the player, but an ex-NBA player went in there last week and tried Voodoo, and he is in love with it. So if you are looking for a coffee vape and just haven't found one to fit your flavors, try our Voodoo. It's really good. Um... It goes with every breakfast and every dessert that you could think of. Um, and, and he really liked that. Um, in Okinawa, now they have a store on base serving our military personnel. Um, if you guys know of vape shops on base, um, please let me know the name of them. I will contact them and try to get our e-liquid in their store. They get a special pricing because it's to support military service members who are quitting smoking. Um... And then uh, Vapia also has three stores across Okinawa Island that are standalone stores. Now, those stores, you can't get nicotine, but they order a lot more flavors. So if you're in Japan and you've been vaping Wookiee, <laughs> you need to go see Vapia. Um, they have a lot more flavors in stock than just Wookiee. And some of our best flavors are, are things like Delirious and Darth Vapor and our Berry Blends and Creams. So... <coughs> They've ordered a lot more of that in, than any other store in Japan has. Um, 
and that lady's name is Miss Shoko. Hi, Shoko. I know you'll watch this later. Um, they're 15 hours ahead of us, so there it's already the first. <laughs> um, and they're probably asleep. So, like I said, you guys, if you um, are old enough to vape, you're old enough to vote. If you're old enough to vote, you need to know who your congressmen, who your representatives are. Contact them. Let them know that you care about the vape industry, that you think it's a good option for smoking cessation. Um, like I said, 18% of the people in a, a, in a 886 participant blind study, half of which got NRT replacement in a ton of forms. They had a choice of the patch, the gum, and the lozenges and could actually switch up between those. And the other people got an e-liquid and a starter kit in their preferred flavor. Um, 18% of the ones who were on a vape quit smoking and stayed quit a year later. Um, in the NRT department, only 9% quit smoking and were smoke-free a year later. So it really is effective. It does work. Um, you get your nicotine. You get the oral fixation that you have. And really, I I'm not good at it, you guys, but if you can get enough smoke, you can blow some of the coolest shapes and they make octopuses and and triple rings which i mean houdini couldn't make a triple ring go through each other so um you can even do tricks so that's about all i got this week i'll see you in two weeks we'll go back to the regular time of two o'clock i like keeping it regular you guys um thank you so much for watching today